Hello everyone, so in today's video, I'll be shining a spotlight on my most recent watch acquisition, the Ming 1709. So this is essentially a series where I shine a spotlight on my personal purchases. I've previously done similar videos on my Chrono Tokyo Toki, my IWC Mark 18 Liberty Prince, my Taekwondo Monaco, my Tissot Pure X Power Mini 80, Brian Ross B05, Santos Tecate, and most recently my Two Door Black Mayfield Blue. In this video, I'll showcase another blue watch, the Ming 1709. So this is why I bought it. So Ming has been on, you know, a brand that's on my radar for years now. Born in Malaysia, Ming started as a micro brand with its inaugural 1701 watch having a retail price of just 900 USD back in 2017. Coincidentally, about the same time that I founded uh, Watso Shop and started reviewing micro brand watches. Since then, Ming has really built a cult following for itself and has seen one as an independent label today. The first Ming that caught my eye was actually the 1906 Copper, which went on to win at GPHG. I love the trademark Ming design, the mosaic Dao was to die for, and its affordable price point. Since then, I've tried to procure the 1706 multiple times, including the later Slate variant, but to no avail. So when I heard that Ming was not only doing an update, but that the update would be the last in the entry level 17 series, I knew I had to get one. I actually covered the launch of the Ming 1709 when I was writing at SGX. In the article, I wrote that the new 1709 looks great, especially, you know, with the floating minute track, previously only seen on Ming high end models. I also said that I like the blue down variant, uh, because it's more striking than, and brings out the Gyoshe center better than I think the burgundy uh, variant and I op eventually opted for the blue 1709 when orders open. No, I regularly cover quite a lot of watches on a regular basis but a few actually makes me you know, spend my hard-earned money on them so I think that's testament to how special I thought the 1709 was and for the moment I laid eyes on this 1709 really was love at first sight. The Dow is really just eminently striking largely due to the triple thread of again this Yoshi Center, the floating minute thread uh, which includes the brand's trademark so O marker at 12 o'clock, as well as the scatternized hands, you know, which is a feature typically seen only on a pricier 27 series. This shade of blue is very attractive as well, and you know, it complements, I think, the blue. I don't know if it's visible here, it complements the blue uh, stitching of the strap as well. With the case diameter of the 8mm, the Ming 1709 wears extremely well on my wrist. All my recent watch positions, you know, the, again, the Chrono Toki, the IWC Mark 18. A lot of the prints that Hoya Monaco, Tissot Pure X, Brown Mighty 80, Brian Ross Bay All 5, Santos Ducati, and the Black Bay 58 Blue, they're all about 37 to 40 mm wide. So this uh, 30 mm 1709 fits right in that sizing sweet spot. However, you know, it has that signature flat lungs that you know gives it added wrist presence at light. It's relatively diminutive case size. Powering the Ming 1709 is the caliber. 330.M1, which is essentially the Salita SW330-2 that's been modified by performance maker Swat ATN for the brand. Originally designed the GMT movement, the 1709 features an independently adjustable hour hand that makes it travel friendly. So let me show you guys here. So you can see you can adjust the hour hand independently you know, without moving the minutes hand. So it did suffer from some movement uh, alignment issues I seen the movement itself, but those seem to have only affected the Mercena lab collaboration and not this, the standard 1709s. As you can see, you know, there's no, maybe by the original position, there's no misalignment issues you know, with my timepiece, so there's nothing to complain about for me here. All in all, you know, I'm really happy that I got in a curtain call that was the 1709. Despite Ming being a hyped brand at the time, the brand won a GPAG after all, the 1709 was still surprisingly affordable at just under 3,000 US uh, Singapore dollars which includes import fees. And despite costing relatively little, the watch really offers a lot in terms of build quality and design. As a fan of micro brands, I'm really proud to own a Ming. It started with an off affordable offering but differentiated itself with a signature aesthetic and grew leaps and bounds to develop more refined timepieces and win accolades along the way. I think it's a case study on how a uh, Southeast Asian based micro brand is based on Malaysia, which is very close to Singapore, right? can be wildly successful and I hope more follow in his footsteps in the years to come. Alright, that rounds up this short video on why I bought the Ming 1709. If you like the video, do give it a thumbs up, do subscribe to the channel, do comment below what you think about the Ming 1709 and share the video around. As always, I'll see you guys in my next video. Ciao!